Hello, everybody. It is Wednesday, July 12th, 2023. Welcome to Flickr Effect. I'm Dave Lott. Joining me in this episode is Bobby Jackson. How's it going, Bobby? It's going good. Good, good. And also here, Michelle Hillard. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. Hi again. Hi, hey, everybody. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I, had this, like, brain, I had this brain fart of like, I'm, I'm going to say something, but wait, what am I going to say? And uh, I got to, <laughs> I got to say something. There's too much silence. Hey, I'll just say, Hey, anyway. Happy guys, Wednesday. Uh, happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday before, well, not the Wednesday before con, I guess it's two Wednesdays before con technically, even though pre night is next Wednesday. So yeah, I was going to yeah. say it's so it is the Wednesday before a con. week. Yeah. A week <laughs> before we are a week out. One yep. Week. Yep. One week Woo-hoo. out, and uh, as we had discussed last week, won't be like a, a ton of um, studios there. And at this rate, I guess we'll know here in a few hours if there'll be any actors there. Uh, yeah. There set to uh, yeah. See if we, if they go on strike tonight. So well, I guess we'll know that in the morning. So but tonight's the big night, huh? Yeah. It is. It is. It so. Is. We shall see. It's a it's an interesting developing story, and um, you know, yeah. <laughs> it seems like they're more uh, willing to work with the actors to get something done, even if it's at the you know minute before midnight, than they are with, with the, writers. the writers. Yeah, they must starve out the writers. Who cares about those yeah. guys? Yeah, but, it's that's amazing yeah. to me, honestly. I just don't it's, get it because yeah, it's so, an actor doesn't do anything without a script, right? right. So, why would you in, give more importance to well, the actors? Have AI write it now, the writers, yeah, right. You yeah, just have so, AI write it now, and you just hire people, just you know, hmm. basically, they just come in, they write it, and then they're gone, and I don't have to pay them anything, I have to pay them yeah. additional money after that. They write it for a flat rate, and they don't get any like royalties off of it they get nothing in yeah it's all a big it's a mess it's a mess really is what it is so we'll see how it all shakes out but yeah it's gonna be a very chill con for us well i don't know about that Uh, yeah i don't know there'll always be things to do it just may not be a necessary because i feel like if there's not a lot of those main panels that people are going to be going to which Judging by the schedule, I don't know if you guys had a chance to look at it yet. There's not a ton a of bit. big panels, so um, there right. are definitely still other panels. But what, but if the actors don't show up, then it gets a little um, more sketchy in terms of what those panels will provide. But if people aren't at the panels, that means they're going to be on the floor, probably, So or out and around the city. So I think it'll yeah. still be a lot going on in terms I bet of... You's- uh, I bet you some of those vendors are going to see some of the best floor sales they've seen in years. Probably. <laughs> People yeah. are just going to be hanging out buying stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's like a con used to be, actually. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's all for all intents and purposes what con was before all the studios showed up. So Right, right. Yeah, it should be interesting. Uh, so, yeah, I guess this week we all had a chance to see... Uh, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning mm-hmm. Part mm-hmm. One a little bit early. Um, you guys got to see it on Monday. I got to see it yesterday. Was your was your the the showing that you guys saw that was a fan event? Yeah, it was like a, a I forget how they labeled it. It was like fan early access. Yeah, it was like early no, okay. access fan, fan event or something. Yeah, and it was it was done in the Dolby um, mm. yeah, it theater. It wasn't an IMAX, but. but I was I was too impatient to wait for the IMAX. I was like, it was just one of those things. I was like, man, Monday nights work so well for us, just in for general. Days, yeah. really? And then like, I saw that and was like, dude, I'm I'm buying, I'm getting it. I'm grabbing them. I was like, and we got really good seats. I thought we were in a really good spot in the theater, and yeah, I jumped on it, even though it wasn't IMAX. So I felt like I when David told me about it, I kind of freaked out a little bit because. I, he was like, yeah, I'm going to go see it tonight. And I was like, what? Because <laughs> I didn't realize there was a, a fan event uh, that was playing that early on a Monday. Because I have mine, I had mine for Tuesday. And it wasn't a, a fan event, but it was showing in the IMAX. And that was the first day you could see it in the IMAX was yesterday. So mm-hmm. I was like thrown off by that because I didn't realize that it was starting um, yesterday uh, on Monday. But 
knowing that I would have preferred to have seen it in IMAX first, then that's why I completely didn't even recognize or realize about the um, the Monday showing. So, was it was your guys's uh, viewing of it sold out? I don't know if it was officially sold out, but it was full. It was I mean. full in there. I mean, I didn't pay attention too much to the far back back rows, but I will say it was it was full. But it's also the Dolby Cinema screen. It's there's less seats because of right. the big recliners that they have in there. So with that said, I think there's a lot of showings in Dolby Cinema that fill, period. And then yeah. our theater. Yeah, I mean, fair. but yeah, I, I think there were like seats like toward the very front like toward the screen that looked like yeah like row there. one and row two but yeah rare, even big movies it's hard to see people in those see people it is really by those. yeah that's true yeah uh well with this latest one mission impossible we got uh christopher mccrory back to direct and of course tom cruise and some new additions uh Haley atwell is in this one as well as uh isai morales and uh the normal cast ving rames simon Pegg. And returning are Vanessa Kirby and Rebecca Ferguson. Mm -hmm. And I looked up just now on Rotten Tomatoes. And looks like the critic score is 96% with 266 reviews. That is and high. The, <laughs> and the audience score is 94% with 500 plus verified reviews at this point. Man. So... It seems like across the board, everyone is loving it, uh, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of that. And then I looked at the box office for it, and I didn't quite see the the specific number when it came up, um, what it made over the weekend. So I can't remember exactly the number, but I want to say it was around 60-something million. I could be wrong on that, but uh, maybe, David, if you can double-check that for me. But How much... How much um, it made opening weekend domestically? Oh, Mission Impossible? Yeah. Well, it hasn't really had its opening weekend, right? I mean, oh, it's yeah, only that's Wednesday. right. What I think it about? technically released. <laughs> that's that's why I couldn't buy anything. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. I could have sworn. Does, no, does you it know technically what I... release tonight? Wednesday tomorrow, night? I guess right, technically. Right. That's a good question. Or is it a Friday? Because... I thought it was a Wednesday release, but maybe it's a You're Friday. Right. If you had showings Tuesday night, it must have. I. Because yeah, as soon as you told me you had a w Tuesday night showing, I'm like, well, it must be a Wednesday release. Yeah, that would make most sense. Um, it's going to have a killer but, box off. <laughs> but I, okay, so no, what I did see, I think, was that it was like maybe 7 million in previews, I think, on the first night. But I don't know if that was Monday night or Tuesday night combined or what. Right. But, um, that, that's not bad. I think, it, like you said, it, Michelle, it, it was probably going to have a pretty big opening weekend because I think they were projecting it to be the highest opening of any mission impossible movie which is pretty impressive when you consider what this is number seven so yeah <laughs> to be the highest opening and you've had that many movies in your uh series is yeah it's a good feat so saying something so i guess with that since technically the movie hasn't released should we even talk spoilers tonight because uh i mean in my uh I mean, yeah, we can we can figure this out on air, but in my opinion, I mean, as long as there's a warning, yeah, you know, yeah, okay. I, yeah, you're you're given the choice to <laughs> to to listen or not or watch That's or not, true. like because some of us, some people, I've seen it. it's not like we saw like some early like premiere, yeah. right? You know? I mean, it's true. Okay, so that's my that's my take. We'll just give yeah. the big warning bells. Hopefully yeah, and uh, you also figure I think that there's been nice. enough of the people who go see it as a profession have given their uh spoilers right. and stuff too. Right. So I think we're in the in the okay side of that. So All right. with that being said, um you, David. That's <laughs> yes, sir. Do you want, do you you want to do you want to talk about what your, your thoughts were on uh Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning part one? Uh, I would be happy to talk about my thoughts on Mission right. Impossible Dead Reckoning Part One. Um, do we? I mean, do I? Am I crazy to not know for sure? Like, do we have a release date for Part Two? 
I will look for, for that, but I could have sworn it was going to be same time around the same time next year. That's that, kinda, that was the so, assumption I was under as well. I, I couldn't remember if I'm just assuming that or if I had actually heard that somewhere. So that's what just popped into my head and I thought I'd ask. Um, but anyway, uh, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, part one. I'm just going to keep saying that super long title. Uh, <laughs> June 28, 2024. Okay. Um. Big fan of this franchise overall. Uh, really, I, it's hard to think of a franchise that has had this many movies where the, I'll just say the extreme majority of them, basically all of them minus one movie have been quite good. And you could argue that they get better and better. <laughs> like it's, even though I, I'm not saying, I think, if, you know, as we have progressed, they have always been better than those before it. I'm not saying that, but you know what I mean? Um, anyway, it's, it's an impressive franchise for sure. And, uh, this movie, I loved this movie. <laughs> um, it, it did not disappoint at all. It is nonstop. It's just perfect pacing. It's just perfect, like a perfect blockbuster movie going experience, you know, kind of similar to Top Gun Maverick last year with another Tom Cruise film. Hmm. Like it just, it just, this movie doesn't disappoint. Um, and it's, it's nice that it's a part one of two. It's like this story, the way they're telling it, it's hard to imagine it being only one film. And I mean, this was, what was the runtime? Two and a half hours yeah, or something like that. 243. Yep. Somewhere around there. And it does not, uh, in my opinion, it doesn't feel like 243. Like it, it's impressive see to see a movie that is almost three hours long. And for me, not, not feeling it really at all. Just like, it just moves and. I was if you if it had gone on another hour, I would have been fine. Mm. Like I'm not saying it should have, but you know what I mean. Right. Uh, the movie is is very very good. <laughs> I, was, I was very happy with this movie. That's my my quick spoiler free take. What, what does right. Bobby think? Yeah. So I was going to say, look at Michelle trying to get out of Damn. me saying, Michelle, what did you think? In and no. take it over. I, like, no, actually, I'm Bobby, next. Yeah. Next, I feel so like it's okay. I go next. I go first a lot. Well, so I'm trying to call I David went. this time. But I feel like it's always like, it's always like either me and then David or David and then me. And I'm like, well, you know what? Bobby should no, go. Oh, gosh, darn. To be fair, it's not like I usually pick who pe who goes first. It's the bull who picks you guys first. That's so it's, true. Not like, oh. it's not like I do it. So. Well, the bull oh. is sitting here looking at me like, yeah. I, what am I doing here? <laughs> right? Why like, am I even here this, tonight? Why am I even here? In this case, um, I felt like, you know, let's switch it up a little bit. Let let the bull have a day off. So, you know. We, you we do relax, bull. Yeah. So um, what did I think? Well, I mean, uh, not to beat around the bush or anything, I would just say I, I feel like I'm on the same page with David. I just really just had an enjoyable time watching this movie. It felt like this is what you go to the movies for. And honestly, it, when I watched it, I just I remember thinking to myself, this was afterwards, and I was like, you know, I'm so glad Tom Cruise yelled at those people during the time of COVID because of he, how seriously he took making this movie because right? it really paid off in terms of what's on the screen. It's like he takes these movies seriously. And I don't know Tom Cruise, but obviously, but um, I, there's his his public persona life that he has with everything that that has and entails. And then there's the, the movie star of Tom Cruise in, in that aspect. And that aspect, I feel like he loves movies. And so when he's making a movie, he is making it for the people who are spending their dollars to go see it and wanting to, he's wanting to put in, uh, to put out the best possible product for the people that are going to go spend money to go see him. And so that, Maybe I don't know is plays into ego, maybe or uh, to some degree, or maybe it's just how much he deeply cares about the experience. Either way, it shows when he makes these movies that are really literally something of a thrill ride when you go in there and it you feel like you got your money's worth when you go see one of these movies. And um, like you said, David, last year he had Top Gun, so 
this year he has Mission Impossible. It feels like he is giving us a good experience every time we go to the theater to watch one of these movies. And it's so funny because at this point, he's that guy in, in the sense of like, it's hard to think back to the fact that Tom Cruise used to do a lot of other type of movies, dramas or, or whatever. It's like he's become an action guy at this point. At this is this stage of his life, no doubt, uh, no less right. in terms of how old he is, that he's now an action star. So it's interesting in that respect and in, in that he makes sure that uh, everyone has a, a good time seeing these movies and it just pays off. I just thought that it from the beginning, it just grabs you and then it barely ever lets you catch a breath before it jumps into another thing. And what I will say is that while I don't think necessarily there was one specific um, stunt that was like the one that you're going to be talking about you know, for years from now, other than obviously you see what the one he does with the motorcycle. I just think that just pound for pound, the amount of action that's in this movie is what really is the, the draw for this particular one. Uh, it maybe isn't one specific stunt. It's just the amount of different things that are happening in it that keep you engaged and, and on the edge of your seat of what's going to happen. So, yeah, I, I definitely loved it. Um, I thought Haley Atwell was great in it. And in fact, that it's not until actually this moment as, as I'm talking about it that I kind of feel like if I hate to sort of compare in, in this way, but if Haley, if um, Phoebe Waller Bridge was playing this type of character in Indiana Jones, I think I would have liked her character more because I actually liked Haley Atwell's character in this and what she was doing compared to what Phoebe was doing in Indiana Jones. But outside of that, you know, um, just everything about this was was just great. And I remember thinking as soon as I finished watching, it was like, I could literally go back and watch this again if it wasn't so <laughs> late, if it wasn't almost midnight. So, uh, yeah, I do feel like I want to see this at least one more time while it's in the theater. I hadn't, thought, I hadn't thought about what you just said when it comes to, like, the Phoebe Waller-Bridge character from Indiana Jones, but I, I get what you're saying because in this movie, Haley Outwell's character is not, and in Tom Cruise's character, they're not, like, exactly on the same page as a, as a duo here, mm -hmm. but their dynamic is is better than the one you see in Indiana Jones yeah for sure and she's yeah. much she's much more likable even though she's kind of doing her own thing and yes. not necessarily playing along versus right. Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character who is just not likable <laughs> yeah yeah i mean <laughs> For i think the most part. i think yeah. on on one hand the the leverage that they have with these two characters is that there is a sexual tension between the two of them so right. that also helps a lot between chemistry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, I definitely know what you're saying. Like, this is a person who is playing kind of a similar way, independent person, a person who is really in it for themselves in a sense. And, but she doesn't come off as, yeah, I don't know, like rigid. Or, I don't want to say edgy. It's like, she just doesn't come off as pointy, I guess. It's hard to explain. Mm. Like she just doesn't prickly. have that bite. Yeah, yeah, she doesn't come off prickly. It's it's in she's almost endearing in moments. It's it's kind of interesting. Right. So what did you think, Michelle? Yeah, Michelle, what'd you think? Guys, I mean, we're three for three. I loved it. I thought it was spectacular. I it, it's it's hard to to think that these Mission Impossible films, like David said, they build off of each other. Like, I think each one gets just a little bit better than the last, a little bit better than the last, a little bit better than the last. Like, they just keep up in the ante. And the storyline on this, the pacing of the story and how it unfurls is perfection. Like, on one sense, I, I'm so looking forward to the part two. Like, so looking forward to the part two. And like David said, like, for a film that is almost three hours long... It could have gone another hour and I probably would not have noticed. <laughs> it was that enjoyable. I feel like it really envelops you in the world. I, yeah. I, you know, and this is a franchise that's had some serious world building over the years. But God, it's 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 nice to be <laughs> it's nice to be in that world. It's a franchise that I've always enjoyed. 
since day one, like David, there's an exception, I think, to to all franchises, and this one has one as well. But overall, as a whole, it's amazing. And this film, it just delivers hmm. the the storyline, the storytelling, the way it happens, the action, like you guys have said, it's just nonstop. I mean, the Venice sequence. Well, honestly, the Rome sequence and the Venice, like they're just, it's all, oh, it's all so good. <laughs> it's just it's just really good. It it doesn't it doesn't stop and it's just done so well. Like it is it is watching almost like a performance piece of poetry as it goes through each section and every section is just so well done and well put together. And yeah, I mean Tom Cruise, you know, man, I, you have to give it to him. He really has made his career an art form and he takes it very seriously. And like Bobby was saying, like he wants to deliver a product for his fans. That is his number one motivation. He wants it to be a good product and it, he, he does it, you know, and I, I, I can't deny, there's just no denying it, but no, this film was, it is very, very good. It, it's nice to have some of the old cast come back in some of the new characters come in, um, and I can never say her last name correctly, but Palm Klempft. Oh uh, yeah, I'm not that she's, good with her last name. Either, she but. she plays um what in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy? Oh Mantis. She plays yeah, Mantis in Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. and in this one, she plays a character named Paris, and I think she was really good. Actually, it was a really interesting character to see her play. I liked it a lot. Um, no, it, just everybody. Like it was for what you get with um rebecca ferguson good like it's, it's all just good it's good 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 <laughs> there's just yeah. good vibes all around like there was moments in the theater i was tense i would say there's f at least three times i could very specifically say that i was extremely like tense in the moment going oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god you know it it's it's really this film was very, very good. <laughs> yeah, I have, I, no. I, I like Bobby. I, I walked out of that theater going, yeah, I can turn around and go right back in. If I have to show up to a job tomorrow morning, I, <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I will totally go watch this one more time. And I'm hoping to see it again. And like we were saying at the beginning of the show, we saw it in Dolby. I would love to re-see this film and see it in IMAX, the way it was shot and really get, get that variation of it. And I think that would be amazing. I'm I'm looking forward to watching it a second time in theaters, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing part two of this of this two parter film. Yeah, you know, you mentioned seeing it in IMAX, and I did see it in IMAX. And yeah. after I watched it in IMAX, I realized that I probably should not have watched it in the IMAX that I watched it in. Which oh, is, you know, IMAX. Don't... I know I go to a oh. traditional, well, not even a traditional at this point, but an old school, actual big screen IMAX, not the ones that have been sort of modified a little bit smaller right. than that one. And um, seeing it in that in that screen, it's it's for sure nice, but it doesn't fill up the entirety of that screen. So I think it's made for an IMAX screen that is sort of a IMAX screen. So. That probably mm. would fill up that entire screen. Interesting. And, um, yeah, and, and provide a, a more um, fulfilling, uh, in in ways like entertaining aspect of seeing it that full. Um, because I was looking and I could notice like the 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 black screen above mm. and below uh, for most of the time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it sort of blends because it's all black. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, there'd be times I was like, oh, okay, so probably this is more for the the other size IMAX screen and that the only type of movies that you would want to really see in the true IMAX well you can see any movie in there but the ones that would really mm -hmm. truly fill that entire screen of the real the real IMAX is something like Oppenheimer where there's uh done in a 70 millimeter and you know that there's going to be a, a large fill for that so um but yeah Outside of that, it still was really a good view and good, nice picture quality seeing it in the IMAX as well. Yeah, I know what you mean, because we have one 
IMAX screen like that here in Orlando. That's a legit mm. IMAX screen. Mm -hmm. And I would, for a while there, try to see certain movies, like mainly Christopher Nolan films in there. And it worked out great. I remember seeing like Dark Knight Rises in there yeah. and it was fantastic. Um, but there was a, I can't remember the last movie I saw in there. And I remember I, I had not the best experience, which was a kind of a bummer. Mm. Um, I'm so trying to think what it was. Lately, I feel like I've actually had a better overall IMAX experience in the LIMAX screen at our local AMC, which, yeah, it's LIMAX and, you know, whatever you think of that, it's still a great screen. I mean, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I have a feeling I'll see this and that, not in the true, true IMAX, especially considering what you just said. No. But yeah, yeah, I mean, no. you can still totally see. I've seen movies in there, and yeah, just because it doesn't yes. fill the whole frame, I, you're not saying it looks bad. It's just, no, not a, not by right. any means. Yeah, right. No. Well, you guys want to get into some spoilers? Should we put up a spoiler banner, David? If you have sure. one, or, all right. We're gonna do some spoilers. All right. So you, you've been warned. You spoilers. you know that we're three for three. Spoilers. We love it. Go see it this weekend. Enjoy it. You will have a great time. It's a, it, for if you take our word for it. So, uh, getting into spoilers. So, you know, okay, I won't say I was necessarily shocked when Rebecca Ferguson mm. character dies, but I was a little bit shocked in terms of I'm still sort of trying to suss it out. And maybe you guys can help me here, but Michelle, you mentioned there's some sexual tension between Haley Atwell's character and yeah. Tom Cruise. So is my man like swinging from vine to vine is like yeah. holding on to one vine and letting go as soon as it yeah. gets, cause I, I don't understand how it looks like he has feelings for Haley Atwell's character, but yet yeah. he was he, clearly there was something with him and Rebecca Ferguson's if, character. So I was like, oh, what's going on here exactly? Okay. So I don't think they really spell it out exactly, but my, impression is that yes uh you know ethan hunt and uh i keep wanting to say inga but it's not inga it's elsa mm. ethan hunt and elsa i think at, at some point in time not that we see they had a thing they were they were a thing whatever mm. you know little you know off-duty work um and I think they have a, a lot of sexual tension, especially in that that first one that they met in. And now I can't think which one it was. Um, Rogue Nation. Oh yeah, no. yeah it, was right. Rogue, Rogue it was Rogue Nation, yeah. and there's a lot of sexual tension in that one with them. And then it's like maybe they hooked up after that before Fallout, or they hooked up after Fallout, but then they kind of had a falling out. Maybe not like a bad falling out. Just uh, she's she's very much a I like to do my own thing kind of person. Yeah. And he's like, just just be one of us. And she's like, no, I don't want to commit to anybody anymore. I got hosed over by uh, MI6, and I don't, I'm not playing these games anymore. So I think that's why it's like they're almost like an ill-fated like little tryst. Like they have the sexual tension. They definitely probably hooked up, but they're never going to amount to much because of her viewpoint on a few things. And so, yeah, like there's the scenes where basically he is in between the two of these women, and I'm watching this going, dude. <laughs> this is like, he, this, there's, a, there's a lot, there's a lot happening here. There's lots to take in there in that moment. <laughs> like, there's the old kind of flame and like the new flame, and I was like, oh man, you're all right. That's cool. It's cool. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> um yeah no i think ethan um i think he enjoys life you know i think he <laughs> has enjoys life. he has <laughs> yeah. uh <laughs> that's a nice way to put it one way to put it because i think there's... he's come to an acceptance with his relationship and the ending of his relationship with his wife like i think especially from fallout i felt like the two of them had some really good moments where he i think he has really good closure there i think with the way that relationship ended like right. i think he was like okay and I think he was able to kind of move on from, I think now he's, this is an Ethan Hunt that's kind of been able to move on from the ending of his relationship with his wife because of the circumstances of everything that he does. 
So, you know, I think he's in a much better place in a mental health relationship situation. I think he's open to be like, yeah, you know, I mean, like, you know, so we're good. We work well, you know, no, yeah. chicken. I think we can work well too. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. No. Is that your impression too, David? Pretty much. I actually don't think there's as much thought into it. I don't think you're saying, Michelle, that there's like a lot of thought that Ethan is putting into it. I don't but, think there's a lot of thought either. But uh, I mean, yeah, I think the sexual tension between them is 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 not being, especially from his side, not being thought through all that much. It's just right. I think he's just going through it. He's just, just, have you seen Haley Atwell in this movie? I mean, look at her, like, right. I think there's, I think there's a lot of, have you seen, (laughs) have you seen Rebecca Ferguson? Ferguson She's She's amazing. Have you seen Haley Atwell? Also amazing. I Um, mean, can, and there's that scene with, uh, when he's actually talking to Vanessa Kirby and, uh, Elsa's like, so what and exactly happened? Right. <laughs> and then so, there's that. You know, there's that. I mean, <laughs> right. poor Ethan. My God. Yeah. Oh. So hard to be Ethan Hunt. Jeez. Right, right. right. <laughs> More like <laughs> Ethan. Never mind. <laughs> Ethan. Found chicka brown cow Hunt. Yeah. Yeah. Rhymes with Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> all right with that so <laughs> moving on so, uh, aside from that um i i i really thought it was interesting the way that they were playing with ai in this movie and you know it's it, it, what what makes it interesting is because it's the conversation of today actually but, yeah, this mm-hmm. movie was you think being of made how long, like a few years ago right so this was, how this long was like making this this film was being shot what two years ago oh we're like more yeah, at least, right yeah, at least almost that. three so, years yeah because like, it was obviously Lord. during prior to covid and then covid happened you know, oh like, and i have a thought on that too sorry so yeah um i just thought that was an interesting way to go with it and um just the, the way it the the probabilities and predicting different things the way that that would happen. And Isai Morales character, he does a good job of playing this, this bad guy. And mm-hmm. honestly, I, I'm, I'm kind of hoping we get a little bit more uh, from that character because yeah. uh, I've seen Isai in a lot of different things. And he's a great actor and I would like to see more than just sort of just the bad guy aspect of him. He could just be that, but I imagine there's a little bit more there with him. So Hopefully we get a little bit of that in part two. But um, outside of that, I think the thing that um, I think grabbed me the most was probably the um, the scene at the end with the train. Um, oh, man. Yeah. The way they went from car to car and had to get. You, I was just like tense that entire yes. time yes. because I just couldn't figure out how in the heck they're getting out of this. And every time they get to a different car, it was a different set of issues in terms of mm. uh, being able to make it from that car to the next car so i thought that was staged so well and just done really well and just a, a, a real nail biter in terms of how um close they cut that with the everything that was going on with the net scene yeah oh no yeah that was like that it's like the whole movie there's just so many great tense moments but yeah the train scene is just that is like 30 minutes of just like white knuckle in it basically like it's yeah. yeah man it was it was awesome they did such a spectacular job so real quick my thought I, i'm curious i mean they were filming this maybe not the height of covid but just as we were kind of coming down from a height of covid but things were still really restrictive mm-hmm. there's so many scenes of people up in each other's faces mm. and i'm like did they just bounce COVID around between all of them for like nine months like <laughs> you're like dear god there's so many scenes where everybody's just up in each other's faces and i'm thinking man no wonder it took so long to shoot this thing because y'all are probably just bouncing around the whole time i hadn't thought of that but you're you're probably right or at least yes. there had to be some people who would have gotten it at some point because of even though you know with all the protocols there's mm-hmm. still just that amount of closeness all the time each day it wouldn't surprise yeah. me for sure. every day you're taking both two people or three people are taking their masks off and they are in dialogue with each other next right. to each other faces like 
like yeah i mean yeah anyways which is the thought i had a few times during the movie i was like dang how do these people not just get covid all the time <laughs> like they had to right <laughs> but, yeah but yeah no i thought the car chase sequence was spectacular that was just I, I mean like i feel like there's there's car chase sequences that go down to the books in my opinion, and I'll be honest, because I haven't seen Fast and the Furious, I don't count really any of the Fast and Furious car chase scenes. There's other films that do car chase scenes so well. One of my absolute favorites is um, The Born Identity, or Born Supremacy, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just absolutely amazing car, car sequence chases in there. But this this one was oh, so intense. <laughs> so intense. Like, but funny um, too. Had funny yeah, moments but too. also like, yeah, the, the overall the comedy in this whole film is really yeah. well done. It's like, mm. it's light and enjoyable, and it's relatable. It's like it's comedy that you're like, if I was in that situation, that's yeah, that's relatable right there. You know, always oh, so good. So many good things. I'm trying to think of bad things, and I'm really having a hard time. <laughs> well. I will say that there were some times when, um, as much as I do like Isai Morales, sometimes when he was going monologuing, it almost felt a little cartoonish in terms of <laughs> what he was saying. I will but, agree with I mean, that. It's, I it's, will agree with that. Know, it, it, it's whatever. It, it's easy enough. And it's sort of a nitpick more than anything else. But yeah, there was just that. And then I will say as much as I love Shea Wiggum, because he's like such a good character actor, I still had a hard time figuring out like what the purpose of him and his partner's role were in the movie as uh, agents that were chasing down Ethan. Oh. They just seemed always a step behind and just not really contributing much until the train scene, really, I guess, towards that part. But yeah, it was just like, eh, I don't know if yeah. they were necessary. But you know, I didn't. I didn't really mind them. And, and like I said, she uh. was always good and stuff. So I, I like seeing him. And it's funny yeah. too because his partner, along Degas. with, uh, yeah, is that was his name? The character's name is Dega. Dega, yeah, Dega, and then um, uh, the other actor who's in the beginning, Charles Parnell. It's mm -hmm. funny because they're both in uh, Top Gun Maverick, mm -hmm. and so I was like, I wonder if Tom wanted them both in this, or if Chris wanted them both in this, because Chris right. McCoy directed that too. So I was like, mm -hmm. huh. Uh, but I, I thought that was funny when I saw him, uh, both of them in this movie as well. So, well, directed, yeah, he, you said he directed um, Top Gun too. Is that what I said? Or no, he did he direct? No, who directed that? Uh, Joe Krasinski. Oh, that's who I was thinking of. But okay, he was okay. a producer on it, I think. Right, I okay. think he I think Christian McQuarrie was a producer on that film. Okay. Yeah, so I, I was like, I seen them pop up again, but um, yeah. So outside of that, those like were literally my only two uh, things that I, I I thought about it in terms of any nitpicking. I know what you mean about the the duo, uh, where it's like I agree with you. It's not like they bothered me, but it, you could almost imagine a, a version of this movie where they're just kind of more like throwaway people that are just mm -hmm. chasing him, but you don't really get to see much of them. Mm -hmm. And it would maybe still be fine. <laughs> like I, I, I don't, I don't think they really bothered me at all. I think, it, they, I think they did a really good job of basically making them a thorn in Ethan's side the whole time. Like just, just enough annoyance to add to the the spectrum of it all. But what I like is that you know through Ethan's actions and like all the chasing they're doing. You know, even Dega is like this guy's got to be out of it for something else. Like, I don't think he's doing it for malicious reasons. I don't think he's doing what he's doing for malicious release reasons. And so it makes me think that come part two, this is my prediction. We're going to see these two characters kind of turn in a way to help Ethan accomplish the big one, you know, cause every, every mission impossible, Ethan has a big, a big mm. one. You know what I mean? Like there's a big, like, real planned moment right mm -hmm. like i mean the train kind of was but that was you could tell it wasn't like the big one so it 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 makes me it 
beckons the thought process of like, well, are these two characters going to come around to seeing Ethan's side of things and go, okay, we'll help play a role in the big one, quote unquote, mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. part two, possibly, especially, especially Dega. You can tell he is very yeah. like, I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> I don't think this dude is going this hard. I think he's trying to accomplish something. Like, there's obviously a greater good here that he must be going after. So he's already got Dega like flipping teams possibly. So mm. you'll never know. Yeah. This is a random question for you guys. It's like, what's your take on when, uh, and I'm going to, this is about the marketing in this movie. <laughs> like when it comes to how maybe if, if at all it affected like how you were watching it, but what's your take on the way they marketed this film and that they're, they're basically showing the like behind the scenes DVD extras of this film, mm. like as marketing material, like the big, material. the big jump and everything, like, all of the big like yeah. stunts, like yeah. and not hiding it at all, like mm-hmm. before everyone has seen this movie. You know, I mean, before our showing. <laughs> oh like, yeah. You know, I don't know if it was because of the fan event thing that we did or what, but they showed um, the train thing. They showed the car chase stuff. Like they showed yeah. a thing, like this oh, kind of okay. featurette about the car uh, chase with the Fiat, and um, it kind of gives away the scene. Well, to a, a little, yeah, to, to, a, an extent. to an extent. I mean, but and I, I guess I asked this because there's a, because of the way they have been marketing this and and really making sure audiences understand that like what went they went through to shoot this stuff which is cool like Mm -hmm. and i get it like especially like tom cruise really did these things guys like he was really driving this car and he's really like jumping off Mm -hmm. this motorcycle Mm -hmm. you know and they want audiences to to kind of like i think understand like what they're really watching but then at the same time i found like while i'm watching the car chase scene for example like it almost it's hard to then watch it and not imagine the production of it like i'm i'm sitting there watching certain shots and just imagining like how the cameras are set up around this car or, you know how everything is being done on the behind the scenes side of these these shots so it, it's like part of me is like uh, like it didn't bother me but i don't know it's just something I, I thought about so i thought i'd ask you guys. i will say like that marketing doesn't make my brain go to that point like it doesn't make me think of the behind the scenes of it all when i see that kind of marketing it 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 my thing is like i see that kind of marketing and it frustrates me i'm like do you it almost makes me feel like are you trying to prove that this movie is gonna go that hard you don't you don't need to prove that to me like you don't need to give me behind the scenes like of how intensely this was made and just how much you know like i don't need to see that like i don't that marketing to me comes off as we're not sure this is gonna be enough and it it comes off like they're concerned and that's what I don't like about that kind of marketing. It it feels like it's cheapening the movie experience a little bit. Hmm. But it doesn't make me think about like how it's done or anything like that when I'm actually watching the scene. If anything, I'm frustrated because I'm like, well, I've seen this now in the I mean, promo. Yeah, the motorcycle jump we've seen so much. So many times, like, you know. And so there, it's it's like part of me would like to imagine a world where I just watched the movie and I'd never seen that shot before. And how would I have reacted to it versus yeah. When it, it does, happened. It's like, well, yeah. there it is. I've seen this it does before. Make, it's it does cool. make me think that and way, And it's cool too. seeing it on a big screen. I've been watching it on my phone or on right. at home on the TV. It's okay. Now I'm watching it on the big screen. That's still awesome. Right. But I, I have seen it for the most part before I saw the movie. Any thoughts, Bobby? I think the way I, I interpret it or at least thought about the, that marketing aspect is that to me, it felt just like they were leaning into their strength and they know that uh, that's the thing that people love about these uh, Mission Impossible movies is that Tom does his stunts. And so they want to see some aspect of it and how it's done, because in today's day and age, there's not a lot of people who buy DVDs and Blu-rays and won't ever get to see those actual behind the scene things of how something was made, but would have that curiosity 
And so I think it does a good job of giving you an aspect of it, at least from the ones that I saw. I saw the one that they did for the train and then, of course, the motorcycle one. And from what I could see, outside of the one for the for the um, motorcycle one, the, the other one seemed to do a pretty good job of giving you a little bit of the actual scene, but then really showing you just enough of, like, how they were actually done doing it because uh, did you guys see the train one um feature Actually, i don't i don't think i've seen that one no i don't so think we had the train pretty, one we had a different one it's pretty interesting because they christopher said they had to actually build a train and yeah. have it on a track and so that they could actually uh shoot it that way and you can see isai and uh tom on top of this moving train and they're doing all this choreography stuff and it's impressive and to be able to see that and see what goes into it and i don't feel like they gave you too much to where it spoiled any of that scene and especially because um within that i don't really even think that they showed any of the stuff that was going on with the train car as it goes over other than they showed that a train actually went over and they had to do that with one take because they only had that uh, opportunity once for it to go there and yeah. so i think that um they did a good job of marketing that and I, I don't have a problem with seeing it if I see it far enough removed. I think where my issue would be would be if I'm about to actually see the movie and they're showing that right before I see the movie. It's like, well, I don't want to see it now. I'm about to see the movie. Like yeah. if I had saw it a few months ago or a couple months ago, then it's fine because, you know, my mind will let that fade right and, you know, yeah it wasn't but like right before no, it was right before it. it was a little weird it was right? kind of yeah. it was kind of bizarre when it kind first of started like... showing and i'm like i'm really really doing this I'm yeah like, okay it's fine but <laughs> and then they went they showed this whole thing about like the premiere in abu dhabi and the premiere mm -hmm. in rome and showing like <laughs> you know the the cast talking to press and stuff and like I was kind of like, oh, I don't really I'm care. Like, I just want to watch this. the movie. I just want to watch the like, movie. This like, is a long like, movie. Like, like, I'm like, a part of, like we were kind of crossing our fingers because it's a it was a fan no event trailer. thing. And when we did that with the flash, yeah, there was no trailers. It was great. Yeah. Like, yeah. and I was like, oh, maybe that'll be the case tonight because this is a long yeah. movie. We'll get out of here before 10 p.m. Right. <laughs> you right. know. Nope. No, nope. no, no, there was trailers. And then there wow. was the two event things. Yeah. And it wow. was just like, oh my God, guys, can we just watch the movie? That'd be great. Yeah, I, so randomly thinking, I was just thinking, so the gentleman who's playing uh what is it it's not jacob it's gabriel uh you said his name is isa isa morales isa morales yeah can you imagine being isa morales and getting the the part and being like yes i'm gonna be in the mission impossible i'm gonna play the the bad guy you know i'm gonna have a fight with tom cruise we're gonna be on top of a train mm -hmm. tom cruise does all of his stunts I'm going to have to do my stunts or I'm going to look like a wuss <laughs> yeah. in his head. You know, you've got to be slowly like wrapping the concept of what you just signed up for in your head. Like, it's one thing to go to all your auditions and meet with the directors and go through all those stages and be like, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. You get the part and you're like, I got it. Oh my God. I'm going to have to do this. <laughs> the realization and that you are going to be on a moving train Fighting Tom Cruise. And if you want, you can get a body double or a stunt double, but Tom isn't. No. And to your point, so, though, there's an article. I didn't read the article, but he, there was literally an article that had him quoting saying, you know, when he did that, he's like, you, when you're on a movie with Tom, you, there's that expectation to be at the same level and, and be able to be meeting him at what he's doing. Yeah. And so, you know, obviously in, in, within the, the story, he probably goes a little bit more into what he had to do for it. But I knew he was be, be up for it because the last thing I seen him in, um, which was maybe a couple years ago, he was playing Deathstroke in the 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 Titans series, mm -hmm. and Deathstroke for anyone that knows, he's a pretty um, a, a well a pretty Teen Titans guy. villain, but yeah, but also yeah. it was going to be a Batman Ben Affleck movie with him versus Deathstroke. But 
Yeah, he and he was he played a fantastic Deathstroke. So I figured I figured he was at least up for the challenge in terms of being able to do it. And but like you said, there's probably that aspect that's like we're gonna be on a what now? <laughs> you know? We're gonna be on a moving uh, what? Going how fast? Doing a <laughs> knife fight? Yeah, okay, yeah. it's cool. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. My, I had my Wheaties for breakfast. Let's do this. Okay, <laughs> sure. Like, you yeah. know, I mean, this, the, like at some point that's got to just smack you in the face and be like, yeah. oh, dude. <laughs> like, you know, and even Don't for you? Haley, even for Haley Atwell, like the realization of like, we're going to be on a train and we're going to do what? Okay. And we're going to go where? And we're going to climb through, huh? And, oh, I'm going to have a moment where I'm going to be completely weightless and then I'm going to slam back into the ground of the train. Cool, 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 cool. What's today? Yeah. Oh, it's Monday. Today's Monday. <laughs> awesome. Excellent. Yep, let's do this. Okay. Like that's a lot. I mean, it's one thing I think for Tom Cruise to be like, yep, let's do it. Let's go. Tom is there. The average actor, actress, actor is thinking, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do like you've got, I mean, you know. They're more normal-ish, I guess, on that aspect. And there, there's got to be a, like, all right, I'm doing it. Let's, okay. You got to psych yourself up to do this thing, man. Like, that's a lot to deal with in your brain. And, and it's funny because I keep thinking about, like, how committed he is to doing these mm -hmm. movies and doing the stunts and everything. And I go back again to the COVID thing and how he was caught yelling yeah. at crew members and stuff like that. And I'm sitting there thinking... You know, this man <laughs> is willing to put his life on the mm -hmm. line for this movie. The least you could do is, you know, show up on time and be pre prepared. Or <laughs> on like, a face mask, like, you know. Yeah, it's like this guy is putting his literal life on the yep. line. And uh, all he's asking yeah. for is you to, you know, be on time and, and, and do your job. <laughs> so right. yeah. I don't think that that's too much to ask. But yeah. and, and like I said, it, it shows on the screen. And um, when, did one he thing break wanted, something on this one too? Because he, he, I feel like each time he breaks something. No, yeah, I don't recall hearing him uh, being injured on this one at all. Okay. But it just I feel like he actually, usually does. I was going to ask you guys, what do you think will be the big thing for the next movie? Because <laughs> I feel like, um, and, and he sort of have has done this already, but I would not be surprised because it might lend itself to it is something uh, in water uh for the well, next yeah. one <laughs> i would imagine <laughs> considering the yeah. situation considering yeah. we know he can hold his breath as long as he can yeah. and uh there's a thing you know under an ice 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 shelf so uh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. something i can water. imagine them being on on set and somewhere in some very cold place and him being in a, some sort of swimsuit and having to actually dive under to go mm -hmm. somewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, they, oh, just... They've already shot part two, right? Yeah, yeah I, it's coming out next June, done. so yeah. I, I imagine it's done, done. Dude, I can't wait. I'm so excited for the second one now. Like, I was yeah. excited for this one, but my God, I am excited for the next one. <laughs> yeah. You think we lose any more characters in the second one? I don't know. I mean, I thought for a second we we're going to lose Toby, actually. Yeah. I was like, oh, wow. Is this the one where Toby's actually going to go? Is is this the one? You know, because he almost did in uh, mm -hmm. Rogue Nation. And so I was like, Wait. oh, was it Rogue you, Nation? No, I was thinking, are you talking about Benji? Benji. I'm sorry, Benji. Yeah. No. Yeah. So, yeah, I was thinking, oh, is Benji going to go in this one? Yeah. Like, because we almost lost him in the rogue nation i was like is this gonna be the one you know with the bomb and everything and i was like i think people will riot the if they kill him off. <laughs> i think for you some think? reason they kill i think so if they kill off simon pig i think he's like the heart and I, I don't know that people would like that they'd be pretty upset they kill him off but i, I could, could see, see that being a reason why they would do it because it would have the emotion the big emotional impact but um, David, who'd you see? What were you saying? Yeah, I mean, I was just going to agree. I I would not bet on Benji dying. I could see Luther dying. Yeah, yeah, I've got um, a feeling Luther might not make it but, in the next one. And being replaced by, uh, what's his name? Dega. Uh, Dega. Like, maybe he has some hacking skills we don't know about that mm -hmm. haven't been shown just yet. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, especially because the Luther character has been there the whole time, but yeah, all, all along, for like right? Two movies, yeah. yeah, yeah. I could, I could see that, but Benji, I agree. I don't, I don't think you would go. No, I have a fun look at Benji, and Benji could kind of hack a little bit, yeah. but totally. yeah, I think, I think Luther might not make it. That's my bet too. Yep. Yeah. If yeah. anyone was the, not going to make it, that right. would be the one. And he seems the most. Um, I, not most willing. That's probably the w wrong way to e express it. But he seems to be um, not as pressed about putting his life on the line for the mission. To put I think he's made life. his peace with his life, and he's made his yeah, peace that, with his decisions that he's if made. If he dies and on the, the job, the he's okay. He'll yeah. Be, you know. Yeah. He, and whereas he, Benji feels like, I don't know that he's, I mean, yes, yeah, sure. He knows that that's the life he's leading. And right, but happen, he's not but ready. But I, I think Luther, yeah. It, yeah, not an acceptance of it, but a, I'm at peace with, these are the choices I've made and this is my life I live. And if this is how it ends, yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with yeah. that sacrifice. And I think that's yeah. where Luther is in his life. Right. Yeah. Well, any. Any other last thoughts, guys? No. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Bobby's the one that always has the good questions, so I'm always, like, waiting for Bobby to give me another question. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think we covered everything other than the fact that we know that um, Tom Cruise has said recently that he hopes he could be like Harrison Ford and, and still making these <laughs> Mission Impossible movies until his, he's in his 80s. So uh, if he has his way, the series will keep going and going. I, I have a hard time picturing that, um, how that would work, really. But, uh, you know, I'm all for it in terms of if they, it's able to maintain a certain level of quality. Uh, um, maybe they would space these out a little bit more, maybe every few years as opposed to it's, every You have to years. ask yourself, like, with the kind of stunts they're doing, like, do, do you just go out on a, with a bang and make it a good solid ending without getting to the point that you're fast and furiousing at your franchise. Correct. Right. You're really yeah. going too Correct. far. And I, <clears throat> these are great. I can't imagine part two is going to be bad. Like if, it, if there's anything going against part two, it'll just be my expectations is mm. yeah. going to be too high. <laughs> yeah. You know? But beyond that, it's like, Maybe we should just stop because that was awesome and let's not ruin it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, I'm a proponent of of wrap it up and wrap it up well. And I have a feeling that's where they're mm -hmm. going with it. And it makes me go, okay, if you wrap it up really good and pretty and it's nice and shiny and we all love it, mm -hmm. don't, 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 don't do it. Don't, don't overdo it. You know, mm -hmm. don't saturate it. Don't, you know, like we've said, fast and furious it. Don't. I, I hate I hate that. Like, right. just be at peace with what you've done and enjoy enjoy the ride that you had, and just look back and go, that was a quality product and franchise, and I am happy with it. And just let it be what it is. But I would say, if there was anybody I would trust to continue to make movies. I think Tom Cruise has proven himself that I think he takes it seriously enough that he wouldn't just be doing it to do it. I mean, look at Top yeah. Gun. I mean, you know, from everything we understand, right. they've wanted people have been wanting to make a Top Gun sequel for a long time, and basically nothing was good enough. He was just waiting for mm -hmm. scripts <clears throat> until Maverick, and then Maverick happened. Like I, I would be shocked if he was like, "Nope, I'm just going to keep make we we need to keep pumping out Mission Impossible films," but even mm -hmm. though they're lackluster, like. You're, yeah, that's true. But I would err on the side of hey, let's not let's not go too far. Yeah, you uh, know I'm with you. All right. Well, if that's it, guys, I think yeah. we're gonna wrap things up. Um, yeah, we're uh, I guess uh, real quick, we're not gonna be doing a normal show next week, <laughs> but. Uh, we will be in San Diego. I imagine we, I'd like to at least record one like audio show while we're out there. Right. Um, we've done that in the past when we've been out in San Diego and it's a lot of fun. Um, we'll be doing some video stuff, or at least that's the plan uh, while we're out at Comic-Con. So look for that on our YouTube channel. 
Um, and yeah, you can find us on Instagram and uh, Twitter and threads at Flickr underscore effect. You can reach out to us on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Flickr effect all the places uh if you're listening to this audio version of the podcast we do stream our record sessions live on our twitch channel uh so look for us there as well and there's another place you can find you david right oh there is there is another place uh, <laughs> michelle and i have recent recently started a separate youtube channel called uh q adventures uh, where we are uh, kind of exploring the world of theme, theme parks. We both live here in Orlando, and uh, we just posted our first video on that channel uh, just a couple of days ago. There's actually a couple of older videos that uh, we've done in the past on yeah. that channel as well, but we kind of look at this most recent uh, upload. It's really, it's kind of a relaunch. Yeah, that's a good way of it. Yeah. So, yeah, go check that out. Q Adventures over on YouTube. Thanks, Bobby. No <laughs> With that, I'm Dave Lot. I'm Bobby Jackson. I'm Michelle Hillard. Thanks for listening and watching, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.